How's it going guys? You're watching Rowdy404 and today we're going to be venturing off into the world of PC water cooling fittings. Okay, so this video is aimed at the absolute beginner. However, if you are a more advanced builder and you have any experiences that you wish to share when building your first water cooling loop and things that you would have liked to know, then pop any of that advice down in the comments below. So to simplify this video, what I want to do is talk about different terminology that you're likely to encounter when purchasing PC parts. This can be certain things that, although it appears very simple to some people, can actually stop others in the tracks as they're not quite sure if uh, these parts will be compatible. So let's start with the big one, which is G1 quarter. What does this mean? Now, G1 quarter is only talking about the size of the thread that's used on the PC fitting. Now, you'll see this in pretty much all PC components, whether they be reservoirs, CPU blocks, GPU blocks, radiators you name it um, this will all have g1 quarter fitting so if it's g1 quarter fitting on the water cooling fitting and then on the component itself your fitting will be compatible with that component now other terminology that you're likely to encounter is going to be id and od now id is simply inner diameter and od stands for outer diameter now this is important information because when you're trying to choose fittings to pair to whatever hosing or tubing you're going to use you want to make sure that the inner diameter and the outer diameter as is the same on the fitting as it is on the hose or the tube so all that is it's just abbreviated but so ID inner diameter and OD is outer diameter. Now sticking with the subject of sizing, another thing that can quite easily trip a new builder up is you'll notice some fittings that are measured in say 7 16 or so half inch or whatever, and then others will be measured in millimeters. Now all this is is a clash of two different measuring formats between imperial and metric. Now depending on what country you're from, you will use a different system, uh, generally just one of the two. Over here in the UK, we use the metric system. So if I was in a scenario where I was looking at fittings that were measured in imperial, and I was looking at tubing that was measured in metric would they be compatible the short answer is yes however there's just a little bit more legwork involved to figure out what it is i need so harnessing the power of google it's very easy to access to access imperial to metric converters or vice versa and then use those and they will voila give you the measurement that you need but yes it is compatible it's just a clash of two different measuring formats now with the marketing terminology out of the way, the next thing you need to work out is what type of loop do you want? So generally you've got two to choose from. You can either go for hard lining or soft tubing. Now I would recommend soft tubing for a new builder as this is a lot more forgiving process as opposed to hard lining, which does come with a far bigger learning curve. However, is very rewarding if it's done right. So this is something for really you to think about and what you're most comfortable with. Um, but if you're looking for the easiest routes into uh, water cooling, soft tubing is definitely the one. So to kick things off, the first one I'm gonna show you is the barb fitting. Now this is used for soft tubing. It will look something similar like this. I will lay some video over the top, um, but this is probably the most cost effective fitting um, as it's a lot cheaper than compression fittings, which is also used in soft tubing. Um, however, these tend to have a bit of a drawback of not looking as nice overall once the build is finished as to secure the hoses to the barb. You generally have to use cable ties which can make things look rather messy. Now, if you wanted a cleaner look for soft tubing, the next one to go for would be the compression fitting, which is this one here. And I'll try and get a better video of that one as well. Um, but this is essentially the same thing. It's a barb and then it has a compression collar that goes over the top, eliminating any need to use cable ties and just overall gives a far more sort of chic finish. So uh, if you're looking for a tidier soft tube and build, compression fittings is definitely the way to go. Um, price wise there is generally a big difference between barbs and compression fittings so you do want to sort of plan your loop as best you can just to make sure that you you can afford it it very much depends on the budget that you have available to you now if you was to entertain a hardline loop the fitting that you would need to purchase would look something similar to this um, now these are very similar to the compression fitting that you've just seen however the application is very different so within the fitting itself it will have uh, seals maybe one or two depending on the manufacturer and then you'll also have an additional seal so once the uh, tubing is placed inside the fitting you'll then have another seal that goes over the top of that fitting and then that's then pulled together with the compression collar which sort of all ties it together so uh, obviously a little bit more complicated and more steps to follow um, and more things to watch out for with the seals especially um, but that is the type of fitting you would go for if you're looking at hard lining now moving on 
Um, there are obviously different fittings that make our lives a little bit easier. Now, the most common one is going to be the 90 degree fitting, which will look something like this. Now, you can buy these um, in multiple different ways. I've got a few to show you today. Um, this one is a rotational fitting, which basically means that you can, once it's installed, you can turn the fitting uh, to suit your desired angle, uh, wherever you need it to point to. This is where these can come in very useful for both hard line and soft tubing so essentially this is where you want to kind of plan your loop very carefully because these can obviously run the bill up quite a bit higher so you won't always need them but they can be very useful under different circumstances now you tend to find with a 90 degree um, fitting that this is a much tighter bend than you'll ever achieve with hard lining yourself or soft tubing as soft tubing generally has well would definitely have a far bigger bend so this can help sort of minimalize the footprint of the water loop um, and make life a bit easier now this is just obviously one version there is other types of 90 degree fittings that again can make life even more easier depending on the application that you've got this one is a 90 degree rotational fitting um, but it has two ends to adjust so not only can you rotate the fitting entirely you can actually rotate the tip to give you a slightly different uh, angle one that could be very difficult to achieve uh, with hard lining or soft tubing so you don't tend to need these a lot but i've had to use them in the past um, mostly for hard lining loops um, and yeah, they can make life very easily, but much easier, sorry, but uh, definitely something that you'd need to sort of plan ahead because like I said, every time you're buying one of these, don't forget you will need to buy a fitting that then goes into the end of it, um, which sort of racks the bill up and can allow that to get out of control very quickly. Now, another fitting that you might come into is the multi-port fitting. Now, these are very useful um, and in most cases, absolutely necessary as these will give you an extra line into the loop. So this makes it very easy to sort of place a tap that you will need to drain the coolant uh, from time to time through maintenance um, and it just gives you that extra port that you can then apply a tap to or a fill bung it depending on how uh, ghetto you want to be with draining the loop but a tap is definitely the most efficient way to do it so yeah there's a multi-port fitting very very useful um, and also just as a extra side note one that's very very easily overlooked i can't tell you the amount of times i've planned loops without drain ports and then realize the last minute that oh, i'm going to need that and yet again it is another thing to factor into the price so yeah definitely a useful one and not to be overlooked so sticking on the subject of taps, uh, this is what one may look like. Uh, this is the EK tap. These come in all different sort of uh, formats depending on the manufacturer, um, but they all kind of did the same thing. But the EK one, this particular one I do like because it has got that extra security with the collar that goes over the top so you can't accidentally sort of uh, actuate the tap and uh, piss fluid everywhere. So this is quite a cool one. Um, haven't actually used it yet, so don't take my absolute word on it as to how how reliable it is um, but this is one I'll be using in my next build so if there is any problems I will soon update this video and I'll let you all know now if you have ventured off down the road of uh, hard lining the other fitting that could be very useful is one of these which is called a pass-through fitting now it is as it sounds essentially this will go between two pieces well let's just say for instance you wanted to drill a hole for your chassis and you wanted a nice clean sort of line into the chassis and then obviously you you can then bring it back out in the outside what a lot of people will do for instance is your hard line on the front where you can see and then on the back you'll have soft tubing um, where you can't see I've done this myself it's a nice little cheap method makes life a bit easier and tends to lower the price somewhat so pass-through fittings can be very useful um, but yeah that's all they are they're just simply a fitting with two female G quarter thread uh, and yeah that's what that is pass-through fitting so another fitting that can be very useful, especially in a soft tubing loop, is quick disconnects. Now, these can be an absolute godsend, but they can also be a giant pain in the ass. Now, the ones that I've got here, these are Barrowtech quick disconnects, um, and they are obviously what they sound like. So it's essentially a way to disconnect the loop without having to drain all the fluid and go through the whole motion of then refilling it. So if you're sort of swapping components in and out uh, frequently, these can be very useful for that. Now, the reason I say these are a pain in the ass is 
The ones I have here are Barotech, um, and I, I use these on my own test rig. And what I found a couple of times is on one of the fittings in particular, you have to make sure that it's fully pushed in because if it comes out ever so slightly, even up to the point where it's supposed to lock, it can actually restrict the flow to pretty much absolute minimal and cause temperatures to, to really skyrocket. So um, yeah, I would say only use quick disconnects if you feel like you, feel like you really need them, um, but they can sort of add a bit more hassle into a loop um, if they're not necessarily re required. So other miscellaneous fittings that you might find useful would be something like this. Now this fitting is essentially um, a G1 quarter male to male fitting. Now this would be useful in a scenario where if you're using a quick disconnect, which typically come with only male uh, female uh, fittings, then say for instance you wanted to mount this directly to a CPU block, you'd have to use the male to male adapter and then you'd simply screw your quick disconnect in um, directly to the block. And then this kind of cleans up that whole thing without having to have tubing in between and extra fittings. So again, this comes down to planning your loop. I shouldn't imagine these would be very common for any other application other than what I've just said. Um, but uh, definitely one to bear in mind if you are sort of intending to use quick disconnects and obviously double check the disconnects that you're buying to make sure that they are female and they don't come with a male uh, G quarter out. So to wrap this up, we've got a couple more to go through. This one is, uh, this would be an extension. Now, the reason this could be useful is this is a G quarter male to a G quarter female, but as you can see, it's basically like a giant spacer. Now, if you've got a very, very sort of small gap to fill where you don't want to particularly use hard line or hose, as this can obviously, again, make things very busy, untidy, these extensions are absolutely great. So I tend to find I need to use these with radiators uh, depending on where I've mounted them uh, just to give me a bit more clearance away from the radiator itself um, without having to use hard line or hose in between and these extenders can come in all various different sizes depending on what you need but still again as I keep saying it's down to planning uh, these can be very very useful um, in sort of certain situations like that now to wrap it up, um, the other one that you're likely to need uh, would be a uh, sort of a blank off bung. Now this is basically just to eliminate a port that might be left open. Um, very, very simple. These come in all different shapes and sizes and can be way more expensive um, than they should be. So don't get hung up on these as long as it's uh, a reputable brand and a reasonable price. Uh, any of them will do um, but yeah all that is is just basically blank off a port that you no longer require so there we have it that's the most common types of fittings that you're going to come across or need for your first loop like i said there will be other fittings available on the market but ones that i would imagine are for a far more advanced loop or more bespoke sort of situations that you're not likely to to encounter however if there is a fitting that you've seen that you might need and it's not been mentioned in this video feel free to contact me in the comments below and i can try and help you out with that any way that i can now another thing i want to touch on just before we end the video Video is obviously the price of these fittings is not cheap um, it's one of the things that's overlooked on most builds and can shock a lot of people when they actually tally everything up in the cart that they need um, and it can be rather expensive um, especially if you're going for a dual loop setup you are essentially just doubling the price now obviously you do have the option to buy second hand this is something I would advise to be very careful with I have done it myself in the past um, but what you tend to find is obviously you're taking a few risks when doing that because you don't know what the previous owner was running through the loop so obviously the type of coolants that could cause contaminants with the coolant that you intend to use and also the big one is the seals they tend to lose their shape over time and then you find yourself having to really crank them down into the uh, the components which is obviously not good especially if you're using any sort of plastic blocks um, as this can cause them to crack and fail prematurely so just a little disclaimer there it can be done it can save you a lot of money Money, but just be very careful with what you're buying it's very easy to tell generally in pictures just on the condition and if they're absolutely stained with coolant I'd probably say stay away as that's probably a, a headache waiting to happen so that brings us to the end of this video as you can see guys it's not rocket science it's just expensive so with that in mind obviously if there is anything that I haven't mentioned um, that you're struggling with do feel free to message me in the comments below and I'll be sure to help in any way that I can if you did like the video 
please do hit that like button as it does really help the channel out. And if you feel I deserved it, please do subscribe as I do intend to continue on this series uh, for the beginners to the more advanced stuff. I think I've got two left with this one, which will be uh, hoses and tubing and coolants. And then we'll move into the uh, more advanced of assembling loops and bending tubes and all of that good fun. So yeah, if that's something you want to see, do subscribe. And obviously, as always, guys, I really do appreciate you watching and we'll see you again soon. Thanks very much. Thank you.